talking Imperial City and why nobody unfortunately plays it. It had a good concept. You had three different areas for the three different factions. Uh, basically looking at the sewers and of course you could come to the sewers and you can grind into this area one of the reasons of course imperial city where why no one pvps in imperial city is because there was really no incentive outside of getting tell outside of getting telvar the sets were not all that great not like you got added ap uh, for being in the sewers <clears throat> nothing really fantastic in terms of drops drops in here and so it never really worked to funnel players into the area sure they've got a little dungeon but you can easily bypass having to go through the sewers to get to the dungeons which was one of the reason one of the reasons that killed of course pvp is because at the very least if you were in essence kind of camping some of these areas you'd be able to fight players along the way who were basically making their way towards these areas the other reason of course why imperial city failed uh, dramatically was because of the risk reward so in imperial city the way that it worked is you kill the mobs they drop telvar which is a form of currency in the game and then you would use that telvar to purchase items or to for now you can get like crafting bags etc and then someone who didn't have any telvar could come along and kill you and you would lose your telvar you lose 50 percent i think originally it was 80 percent and of course this favored uh stamina night blade gankers overwhelmingly and so later on they've reduced it down to 50 percent but it really didn't matter because the overall purpose i should say the overall system was flawed to begin with whenever it comes to pvp the most important aspect and the hardest aspect that it comes to pvp is getting the risk versus the reward down very closely if there's too much risk players will eventually avoid going that route because the, the risk reward ratio is of course too too high the risk is too high for very mediocre rewards and so as a result people will not of course find it favorably because they're losing right they're losing telvar if i'm out here pve -ing and i'm getting ganked by a nightblade that Nightblade has no risk, right? He's not assuming any risk by ganking me. If the Nightblade dies, he just respawns, goes back to his base, and then comes right back and ganks me all over again. And so that was part of the problem, was that the person who's getting ganked is accepting all of the risk with no reward. Because sure, you kill the player, you get a little bit of AP, not really that big of a deal. And of course, that person doesn't have to have any of the Telvar on him to actually leave and go out and gank. And that was probably one of the biggest flaws that Zenimax made. And so what they should have done is they should have required everyone who wants to gain access to the sewers to buy Telvar, to buy Telvar, to gain access to getting more Telvar or a token of something or a key to gain access to the sewers so that there's some sort of risk that when I get ganked, I then kill the ganker, I get a reward. In the sewers, there is no reward. It's very similarly to the upper level. About the same problem persists in, the, of course, the upper level. Now, because that was the case, everybody just played a Nightblade, right? So you'd run around and you'd gank all these PVEers who didn't have impen back when this back back when this area was actually filled. And so you, you fought a lot of these kids that were running around wearing these vines and they would just get blown up and they would lose all their Telvar and they would respawn on the forums and they would be like, this is bullshit, this sucks. Like, who thought this was a good idea? And of course, fundamentally, it's fundamentally flawed from the very beginning. And so Zenimax has made different initiatives to try to draw people into the sewers by having like double XP events. But for the most part, this remains empty. As you can see, you know, just looking at just looking at the map, you can see no one is here. No one's here in CP and no one is here in no CP. And of course, granted, it is a great area to fight. It's it offers a little bit of flavor because it's different. You've got all these beautiful different structures that are great for like line of sighting, etc. Are great opportunities for team fights. But all of that goes out the window if there is no risk reward there is literally no reason to come to the sewers because you get no reward and as a result why would i go there when i can just go up into upper Cyrodiil and i can there's better there's better uh you know it's a bigger map most of the people are are by nature going to be driven there 
And so as a result, nobody comes here and people don't even come here really to farm all that much. It's very rare that you'll even see somebody here farming because there's really no good sets here, right? There's no incentive. There's nothing that incentivizes the player to come here. The other reason, of course, is population in the game over time has basically dwindled down to almost nothing there were very few pvpers left in the game maybe a couple of hundred by comparison to the very beginning when eso was flourishing and pvp was skillful and active you had thousands of players and when imperial city came out imperial city flourished with numerous players now of course eventually it died because of the reasons that i previously mentioned and of course zenimax has done absolutely nothing to incentivize players to come here because it's a free dlc you gain it you have it just by buying the game you have access to imperial city there's really nothing special about the area no one comes to the area sure is it nice are the mobs any any different not really you can just do the exact same mobs by just going to uh, by just going to the dungeons you'll see the very same ones Sure, there is um, the raid bosses that are on the top, but again, the raid bosses either on the top or in the sewers all give the exact same rewards, which is just basically Telvar. And so maybe you might come here for willpower, which you can just purchase, right? So if you can just purchase it, people are more inclined to just go out and purchase willpower or the other sort of sets that you can get from here. So that, of course, also uh, makes no reason for people to come here. On the upper level, the upper level, of course, failed because it's just basically a capture the flag where people just move around in sort of a little bit of a circle. And so what really could have incentivized people to come here were to actually give the raid bosses that are in the upper level some sort of real reward, kind of like what you get uh, for going into the center. Or, if, for example, if you're PvPing, uh, let's say, for example, you're PvPing in Cyrodo, you know, someone has the chance to gain access to being the Emperor, right? Or maybe you, or maybe your guild captures one of the keeps, even though there's really no reward there, but at least you get your name out there for whatever reason, you get a little bit of fame, etc. Even though they just flip in the next couple of minutes, but you kind of get the point. Without any sort of an incentive, it's just basically there's no reason for players to come here, especially with the added imbalance to risk reward. Why would I want to come to a new area just to get ganked by a Nightblade and just lose all my Telvar, and then he doesn't have any risk outside of just dying and respawning. And that's overwhelmingly one of the biggest reasons, especially one with a flawed mechanic, a diminishing amount of players, and of course, no incentive, no incentive for people to come here. And that exists both for the upper and as well as the lower. I had always said that they should have just given the lower area, the sewers, to the PVEers, fill it with quests and let them enjoy it and remove most of the pve mobs from the upper level and make it more pvp centered where um you know where for example one of my ideas was to gain access to the upper level because this is really where the emperor should sit so let's say for example you secure all of the keeps when all those keeps open up basically like a door opens up or a portal opens up where everybody can funnel into and then the last remaining fight for who gains control of the emperorship takes place here down in imperial city where the emperor's throne would be to give it at least some sort of lore attached to it and of course to make the, to tie the upper portion to the lower portion which was the original idea when you actually look at the eso map so originally there were these bridges, right? You can see these bridges right here. These bridges, of course, were never completed. Originally, they were supposed to be completed and people were supposed to be able to gain access to Imperial City. And of course, Zenimax never finished the idea. So unfortunately, the overall concept of Cyrodo never had the opportunity to basically see its full its full concept to fruition. It was a huge part of the you know, the upper portion of the outside of Cyrodo was supposed to be attached to Imperial City. This was this is why you have these bridges. And then originally, there are, you know the there's these uh, mobs that are on the outside of the bridge, and of course you can just basically get one shot. But the whole purpose, eventually, when the game first came out, was to get rid of those mobs, and you were supposed to fight your way into Imperial City to gain access to the throne. Unfortunately, that never happened, and so we get sort of this makeshift. Kind of flung together sort of concept that really doesn't make any sense and as a result it failed epically and of course this is basically the story of zenimax online studios basically half-assing most of the concept and that was because unfortunately for those who don't know a lot of the really good 
uh, content creators, a lot of the really good developers that were there in the video, there in the very beginning of the game, just before the game released, left. A huge number of quality developers unfortunately left right before the game came out, and as a result, most of the content, most of the content that had came out over, I'd say, probably the past three years was actually old content. Like, for example, Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds was actually there before the game even released if you played like the, the alpha and the late alphas. But the reason that it never got released, ironically, was because they could never get, for some reason, they couldn't get the queue system. They were having issues back then, back before the game even released, of porting enough players in accurately so that they had the full 4v4v4s. And ironically, was it five, six years? They still have the exact same problem today. And that just goes to show you, which I have always said, that the people who are left over running basically this sham of a game are typically not the most competent when it comes to development. And it shows in the craftsmanship. And unfortunately, the player base, we lucked out. It was a beautiful concept that unfortunately never got to see its full potential. And as a result, the Elder Scrolls has suffered ever since.